Hi, this is ET370, Lecture 15, Part B. And in this part, we're going to go over uh, different co um, combinations or variations of the SR flip-flop. Okay, so we'll look at, look at a clocked SR flip-flop, a data flip-flop with a latch, and the data flip-flop with preset and clear. And let's just remind ourselves what a flip-flop is. Okay, so we have the set and reset inputs. Set, if I push this and release, Q will uh, get set to high and stay high. And so we have this uh, kind of toggling between these two rows on the truth table. And if I hit the reset, what happens is uh, it'll set the um, Q as low and Q bar is high and toggle between these two rows, okay? And so here's a clocked SR flip-flop. Notice it has the same SR flip-flop as here. The only difference is that it has these AND gates here, okay? And so notice I have uh, an RSR, an SSR, but then I have my R and S on the outside. Okay, so how does this change anything? And, and notice there's also another input C for clock, all right? Okay, so if you recall for, uh, the AND behavior, what can an AND do? It can lower the output or pass an output. So for example, if C is low, then it doesn't matter what R is, this is gonna be dead. If C is high, then the output is whatever the input is, okay? Same for both. So it's an enable in some sense, right? Okay, so this is a three input, two output device, right? And uh, the truth table is actually pretty easy. It looks complicated, but it's actually pretty easy to understand if you understand this behavior, right? And uh, I'm gonna show you this and you're like, oh my God, that's a lot, but it's not that bad. Look at this. These, this truth table is this original SR flip-flop. And so if your clock signal is ones, there's no difference in this behavior than that one because the C is just passing everything through, okay? So this is exactly the same behavior as this. If the clock signal is zero, it doesn't matter what R and S are, then what's gonna happen is RSR and SSR are gonna be zero. And what happens if you have a zero, zero input into your SR flip-flop? It's just the memory, the holding state, okay? And so the clock is just an enable command. If it's one, behave as the normal flip-flop. If it's zero, set everything, set the inputs to zero here and just hold uh, whatever memory you had uh, in your memory bank, okay? All right, so what does an example sequence look like? Well, an example sequence might look like this. So let's say uh, I had the clock as high and I had the reset pin as one. And so therefore my Q is gonna be low, sure. Now let's say I have the clock zero and I also make the reset and set zero. Well, it's just gonna be a holding pattern, all right? So you're just gonna memorize whatever you had, okay? Now let's say I hit the set while the clock is low. Well, if I hit the set while the clock is low, nothing's gonna happen. No change is gonna occur, right? Now, if I then activate the clock, then the set will take in effect, okay? Now, let's say I now go, okay, the, I turn the uh, set off. Well, we're, we're now here in a holding pattern, okay, fine. Uh, and I turn the clock off. Again, nothing happens, right? I still have the, the cue high. Now, if I hit the reset while the clock is, is off, again, nothing happens. I'm here at the holding pattern. But then if I activate the clock, then I see the change where the Q gets set back to zero, all right? So I hope you can see this is actually not too, not too bad, right? It's just the, uh, an enable feature, right, for your normal SR flip-flop. Let's go to a simulation, just check this out. So I'm gonna go here. And so here's the same thing. I have a, a clock signal here, so let me run this. And this clock signal is just gonna be a periodic uh, up-down, right? You can see this on the, on the lower part here, right? The clock is going up, down, up, down, all right. So right now, Q is high uh, and Q bar is low and uh, both uh, set and reset are low. Okay, so if I hit the reset when the clock is low, nothing is gonna happen. So let me wait for the, the clock to go low again. So it's high and low. Notice I, I blip the reset, nothing happened on the output. But if I blip the reset uh, and then wait for the clock to go high, notice the Q turns high, or sorry, the Q goes to reset after the clock is achieved, okay? And now I'm gonna bring this back, okay? And notice it's still in the holding pattern and I can do the same thing for the set. 
So once the clock goes low again, let me hit the set. Nothing should happen. Okay, nothing happens, but wait for it, wait for it, boom. Once that clock goes high, the, uh, the set takes action, okay? And so I hope you can see how this clock is acting like an enable and only allowing the R and S signals to pass through when this clock value is high. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So the next version here is what we call a data uh, flip-flop latch. And it uses an inverter to guarantee that you don't get that bad 1-1 one, one condition. Remember that 1-1 one, one condition here where you have the way to erase memory and also that uh, race condition? Well, that would all be solved if uh, you can't make these two different signals, right? Or the same signal, sorry. And so D stands for data or delay. Okay, and so the circuit looks like this. Notice we just have our clocked SR flip-flop from previously, right? And I've had an inverter here. So now I only have one input for R and S. And notice if data is high, what happens? R is low and set is high. So set and data are the same thing essentially, right? And R is just the opposite of that. So that's nice, okay? And so here's a reduced truth table. Well, what happens here? Remember data is acting like set now. So if the clock is high, then Q is high. If the, clock, if the clock is high and the data is low, then the Q is low. Very simple, right? Because the data and the set are the same, right? If the clock is uh, low, then it doesn't matter what data is. The, you're in your holding pattern state, okay? So remember the clock is acting like an enable. The inverter here is just making R and S opposite to each other, okay? All right, so let's go look at the simulation. Just make sure that this is this behavior is matching our intuition. Okay, so let me go back here. And uh, here is the um, latched version, and I'm gonna run this, okay? And you can see here, the clock again is going high and low and high and low. And uh, remember the data is the set. And once I hit this uh, data high, then if the clock is enabled, then the Q will go high. All right, ready? Okay. So nothing happened because I just blipped it. Okay, I'm holding it, holding it. Wait, there we go. Now we can see that the uh, that the queue matched uh, the set or data once it went high. So if I release that, okay, then we see that the uh, that the queue goes low once the clock goes high. Because remember, uh, having a low here data means a high reset, right? There's no more zero zero condition. Okay. All right, again, the links for these will be in the description, so you can click these and play with it, right? So you can just kind of play with this, right? And you can see all the chatter. I'm just going to chatter it, okay? And notice when the clock is low, it's just going to be holding pattern. It doesn't matter how much chatter, right? But if the clock is high, then the queue and the, Q and the data match each other, all right? Okay, good. Okay, so let's stop this, and let's go back to the last one that we want to share. Okay, so the last one is going to be a data flip-flop with preset and clear, all right? Okay, so what I want you to remember is that uh, we're going to use an OR gate, and an OR gate can either raise or pass data, whereas an AND gate here either uh, kills or passes data. So OR gate raises or passes data, uh, AND gate kills or passes data. Okay, so why is this useful? So we can have this more complicated thing. You look at this, you're like, oh my God, this is crazy. But look at this. This is just the, this is just this, right? Nothing different here, right? This is a clocked SR data flip-flop. And then we have these uh, OR gates here. And I want you to be careful. Notice the top NOR is connected after the bottom OR, right? Same with here. The bottom NOR is connected after the top OR. And why is this nice? Well, I have a preset and clear. And remember, what does the OR do? It raises or passes. So if the preset is high, it doesn't matter what any of this is, this is going to be high. If the clear is high, it doesn't matter what any of this is, the Q bar is going to be high. If the preset and clear are low, then this is just a straight shot through. Okay, so it looks complicated, but really all it is is it, it allows me to Preset Q is high or clear Q, okay? So that's why it's preset and clear. This is just the implementation, right? So what does the truth table look like? It looks a little complicated, but it's not too bad. 
if the preset and clear are low, there is no difference between this version and this version. These are just shorts right here. And this and this are the same. And so what we should see is exactly this truth table here represented right there. Notice if the clock is high and the data is one, you've set. If the clock is high and the data is low, you've reset. If the clock is zero, it doesn't matter what the data is, you're in your holding pattern. Okay. And this is if the preset and clear are low. If the preset and clear are high, what happens? Well, if the preset is high, what have you done? You've guaranteed that Q is on, and this doesn't matter. Okay. If you have the clear is high, then you've guaranteed that the Q is low, right? If you have a clear high, the Q is low, and Q bar is one, right? Now, you don't, I mean, it's silly to have both the preset and clear is one, one, so I don't even put it, right? But I hope you can see based on the sequential building of truth tables why this is true, all right? Okay, so let's look at the simulation and we'll end this last part of the lecture. And uh, yeah, so let's move over, share screen. All right, so here we are. Okay, so what do we have? Again, we have a clock signal just pulsing. We have this data pin, which is like the set. Right now it's on a reset mode, notice because of the inverter, right? And these are low and low, okay? And so if I uh, hit the the high on the preset, look, it doesn't matter what anything is. It's always gonna be high, right? Okay, for this Q. If I set this, uh, this clear as high, then this Q uh, is always gonna be low and Q bar is high, right? It doesn't matter what anything is, right? Otherwise, if these are low and low, these are just gonna behave as normal, right? Okay, good. And then let's see, if I have high and high just to play with it, is that good? Yeah, it's just going to set them both high, but that's kind of a meaningless thing, right? Kind of silly, right? But usually one at a time, I can preset Q to be high, or I can preset the clear high, which means Q is low. And uh, these are just a way to uh, give it a good initial condition if you're just starting up. Okay, again, these links are going to be in the description. Please click them, play with these uh, things just to build intuition. But I hope sequentially you're understanding uh, the clear as the enable or the clock as the enable. Okay, here the inverter as kind of a, a way to guarantee R and S are opposite. And then here uh, a way to set Q uh, as a higher low, uh, depending on if the preset or clear is enabled or not. Okay, all right, have a great day and uh, we'll see you in the next lecture.